amazing to me is that you know being in the industry for so long you know I always often ask my artists this question which is uh tougher from what you know the music industry in the islands or the music industry in America uh I guess it, it, the industry in America would be I guess it would be diff a, a bit difficult because it's a, a bigger bigger market and to be able to to capture um, the the attention of the a label that would do proper distribution, you know, um, get the music out there, you know, um, through all the all the all the mediums and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm trying. Right now I'm working with uh, a young team, uh, a younger team, um, who I believe would have the capability of of doing things that I would not have been able to do. With the music, you know, I'm just a creator, you know, so it's take it to the other step, the other level. Well, now, what kind of advice would you give someone who's um, trying to break into the industry, maintain what they do? What kind of advice would you give them before we take our questions? It's a long journey. It's a hard journey, but you have to stick to it. You know, um, it's, you know, you have to believe in yourself. Um, and open your ears because they will have there's a quote that Clarence Avon had on, on the album. Uh, the, 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 the music for the music is for those who listen. They will have music for those who listen. Mm -hmm. You know, so you know you just have to be um, persistent. And I was I was telling my son that earlier on today. Because he find that he say, you know, Daddy, you're doing stuff. Um, but you know, your generation, they're, they're, they're dying out. You know, I said, no, you, you just have to be able to get the music out there. There's no generation where the music is concerned. There's musicians and there are people who appreciate music. You know, um, um currently, um, we're, you know, there was, there was on, um, it just came out last month, um, one night in Miami and that was the, uh, that's on, um, Amazon Prime, and I was featuring Sam Cooke, Muhammad Ali, um, Jim Brown, as well as Malcolm X. And that was the night when Sam, when um, Muhammad Ali defeated Sonny Liston. So those four gentlemen went back to the um, hotel in Miami and, you know, it's, it's being brought out what that conversation was about. But the reason why I'm mentioning that is because now the world is being re reintroduced to Sam Cooke. And now they're realizing how great his music was. And you talking oh. about some 60 years later, it's still great music. Yep. So your point is absolutely valid, Mr. Buchmann, in terms of good yep. music will stand the test of time. Is that correct? I believe in that. Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, we uh, back in the 60s, we had a singer who worked with my band. Um, his name is Good Clock. Uh, he had a voice very similar to Sam Cooke. And, and, and what was strange about him is that after the year that he sang with the band, um, I heard an interview with Sam Cooke, and his talking voice was 
almost it was like so close, you know. Um, and I remember we opened for um, for Percy Sledge, who did a concert. He did oh, who wow. performed it. He performed he performed in Trinidad, and we were opening for him. And he Bert came on stage because they call him the local Sam Cook, and. He, he he sang the first line in the song, and I was so scared because there was riots outside the, of the the, um, the theater where the show was held, with the audience people trying to get into the um, to the to the venue, and mm -hmm. they were like police and people trying to to retain uh, restrain the the the, um, the crowd. So and we were like teenagers going out, going out on, on, on a big stage with with opening for a celebrated artist, and um, I was a bit nervous going out to be open, the opening, you know, especially with a rowdy crowd. And as soon as this guy sang the first note, the audience went dead quiet. And you know, as a matter of fact, when he started the same person, I can remember coming out with curlers in his hair backstage and see who it was um, that you know, com you know, commanding the audience like that. You know, and he's he was um, inexperienced, but the song it was basically Sam Cook. Uh, we were doing covers at the time, and, and we were doing Sam Cook's covers. You know, um, Tammy and. We were um, all the, be the best in life, free and stuff like that. Girl, you were jamming. <laughs> that's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's some, that's some really good stuff. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, um, Mike, uh, can we take some questions? Sure. Okay. Um, these are questions for Mr. Michael Booth, man. He's sitting here tonight on the Sherrod Show. This question is from Isaac. This is from Isaac from Chicago. He said, I absolutely love your sound. I am Caribbean as well. I'm from Jamaica. And he says he wants to know, what have you learned and what was one of the most valuable lessons being an artist that has helped you to maintain your presence in the industry? Good question, Isaac. Good question. Um... My my uncle, who was um, who uh, Jeffrey Holder, my, he, um, who passed uh, about five years ago, uncle of mine, he he gave me an advice. He said, "Never, you you always be in a position to be able to reinvent yourself, meaning that you know anything you know you don't put limits on yourself in terms of what you want to do and and stuff like that." And uh, I embrace that because I feel that um, the various challenges come into me, and sometimes you know one one will tend to um, believe it's too hard or it's too you know too difficult to achieve, and that 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 um, statement resonates with me to the point where you know I, I'm not afraid of of approaching anything new. Wow. All right. Very good question, Isaac. All right. This is from Mary. This is from Mary from DC. She's saying, uh, nice shirt. You look so relaxed tonight. <laughs> and her question, to, her question to you is, how many no's did you get before you got your first yes? Good question. Oh, lots of no's. I still get a no's. <laughs> you can see how big my own is. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. You just keep knocking on the door. You just keep on the one door open at some point. You know, the, yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm persistent that way. You know, um, I do. I never give up. No, it's not in my not a, not in my vocabulary. But now, Michael, yes. Mike, this is directly for me, and we'll get the rest of the questions. But Mike, um, so you being established and being an icon, why do you still have to bang on doors? Your name is is out there; it's been out there for a long time. Was it there left to pursue? No, uh, you, you see, right now is is um, no. I, I I'm talking about in the early days when I was trying to to, to break through. You know, um, get get deals done and stuff like that, you know, um, you would run into people who don't understand what, what, um, what the music you're bringing to Like when I, excuse, when I came out to the US many years ago, um, I was knocking on, knocking on doors to, to, to break 
breaking the new music that I brought with me from Trinidad. And I had to be able to influence somebody. I had to be able to, um, you know, get a slot for the music that I'm doing because the you know music at some point they used to say what shelf you're going to put the music on you know it's, it's not jazz it's not pop it's not um, R and B you know um, so labels were like like um, I'm not sure you know and I I ran into that kind of um, stumbling block many times um, fortunately for me um, Clarence Evans heard the stuff that I was doing and he was impressed with it. And he is true, his label that, that opened up the doors for me. And I'm so very grateful, very uh, you, know, to, you know, for it happening. We've got time for two more questions. This is from AJ from Des Moines, Iowa. He's saying good evening and thank you for being on the Sherrard Show. You all are doing a great job with the questions. His question to you is, has the record industry been financially satisfying for you? For your 50 plus years not really um I, you know um i would i i, I think i think it's, it's something that um if something i had a, you know if i if it was that i was working towards i would not i would say no but um i always felt it could have been much better and stuff like that but Music, music is is you know my passion. So I, you know the music come. You know I, once I once I'm able to play and be able to put the music out, I feel the money and the things that I got. Those things will come. Mm -hmm. I live a comfortable life. You know I you know I was able to um, make a few dollars, but I, I wouldn't say that I'm a rich person financially. Well, AJ, don't believe all that you hear because look at that shirt. That shirt could feed a homeless in Africa <laughs> for, for 30 days, that shirt. So he needs to stop. We know he's doing okay. Thank you for your question, AJ. All right, last question. This is from Leonard from Montana. His question to you is, are you going to play something live on the Sherrard Show? We're all waiting to see. Well, I've been asking that question as well, Leonard. Well, if you force my hand, I probably have to get my, my, my assistant to bring my guitar for me and I'll probably do one for you. Okay. Yeah. Um, do we need to take a commercial break so you can grab your commercial your, uh, guitar? Yeah. 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 I'll okay. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. we're going to take a quick commercial break. And then, Leonard, you will get your prayers answered as well as the millions that are watching tonight on the Sherrard Show. We will be right back right after this. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Sherrard Show. I'm your host, Sherrard, having a wonderful conversation with the legendary Mr. Michael Boothman. He's all the way in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, he's about to play us a, a tune just for you all who've been itching and begging for it, like me. Take it away, Michael. What song is this you're playing? This is Heaven, one of the first, that is the song that I recorded back in 1975 with RCA label. Um, who I was talking about just now, they were uh, Clarence Avant. Take it away.
That is beautiful. That, where is that available at, uh, Michael? Can, where we could be able to, um, somebody can be able to purchase it. Cause that's beautiful. Yeah, I um, the 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 album is. I'm not sure if it's still in circulation, but um, I have a, a I have. It's not. It's not really, really dis well distributed as yet. It's something that I would probably uh, try and uh, try to do another re-release mm -hmm. of that same particular album. You know. Now, now, Mike, I've noticed most of your songs. A lot of your songs are instrumentals. Is that is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, the guitar now, is my voice. Now, now, let me school some young people on this, and you help me on that. Um, when I was growing up there was a station in Chicago called FM 100. FM yeah. 100 was one of the greatest stations because and when it first came out in the 60s, it was all instrumental. But then yeah. they would add a little easy going, easy listening music, but it was mainly instrumental. Now, um, that was very dear for, to me in my life growing up as a kid because it took the edge off of a cool world. It made the world feel like it was innocent and very forgiving and wonderful. And your music, Mike, is doing that. It's it's bringing, it's taking me back to a place where you can just feel like you want to just live stress free, free and at peace. Is that your intention with your music? That is very, very true. Yeah, yeah, because you know, guitar is my voice. You know, um, I'm not a singer, but I'm a songwriter. I, I, I um, also. Uh, on my album, I, I use voice as like an instrument, you know, um, background vocals and so on. But being um, my main instrument, my voice, you know, as I, I put it, um, you know, the instrumental. You know, it, we, I grew up. I grew up in the world of instrumental as well, too. You know, the, um, the George Bensons and the, uh, you know. Um, I used to be listening to CD 101.9 back in New York City, um, and that is, was a very, very, um, very, very popular station back then too in, in, in New York in, his, in his 70s. Um, and 70s. And, and the thing is that for those who are watching and tuning in, you know, um, people think that listening to music doesn't do something to you, good or bad. When you listen to bad, trashy music, it does put out a bad spirit when you listen to that bad stuff. But when you're growing up on soft music, music um, it makes it easy to slide into romance in a woman. You know, um, many of the great Very artists true. speak about it all the time. You know, back in the record days, when you couldn't yeah. figure out what you wanted to say to that woman, you would just let the Isley Brothers play and hold the phone to it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You whisper in the ear, yeah. <laughs> you dance and, close, man, yeah. you, know, you, you know. It's so, where that we say, we used to say you rent a tile, rent a tile, <laughs> you know that. You just, you just dance with on the, one tile and you just, you know, hold a lady and you, you know what. <laughs> Uh, and that's you know, beautiful. That's a beautiful uh, thing, Mr. Beautiful. Guzman, because yeah, romantic. Um, I, I want. I just hope and pray that your wisdom and those who are watching tonight, you can pass that wisdom on. Because really, I have had enough of listening to music about somebody getting shot, somebody getting killed, selling drugs. Oh. I, I want to hear the music that make that moves a generation. And I'll, I'll say this last thing and throw it to you, and then we'll uh, let you get out of here, Mr. Guzman. Um, <laughs> Back in the 60s, especially with the civil rights movement, I'm not sure, I don't know about in, in uh, Trinidad and Tobago, but I know here in the States, artists got together, first of all, Sam Cooke, when Sam Cooke sang um, A Change Is Gonna Come, that was uh, singing right. to the times with the civil rights yeah. movement. And then Curtis Mayfield, Marvin Gaye, so on and so forth. Marvin Gaye, what's going on? Yeah. Amen, they, they were singing to the Vietnam and so on and yeah. all that. And then even Bobby Womack with 110th Street was speaking about 110th in Harlem. So my thing is that um, your music is singing to a time and I'm praying that time comes back, Michael. What do you think? Yeah, I, I, I have confidence in it. I fear, I fear because, you know, I don't, I'm hoping that it touched the nerve that, you know, uh, you know, let some sensibilities come out, you know? Mm -hmm. Let, yes. let, it, let it resonate within your spirit, your soul, you know? It's, please, it's, you please. Know, 
Please. Now, Mike, um, final question to you. Where can your fans keep up with you and be able to uh, respond to you with any emails or ask more further questions that we couldn't get to tonight? Yeah, I am. Yeah, email me. I'm at Kaiso Fusion, spelled K Y S O Fusion, F U S I O N, at Gmail. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we'll talk. Yeah. And eventually, um, Things are gonna open up in terms of my my um, social media because I have been a bad boy, you know, you know, <laughs> staying away from it a, a, a bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, my my young team is is pushing me back and pushing me into that direction, which is uh, something that I have to, uh, you know, get used to. Well, that's great, um, but I'm sure you're going to get a ton of questions on where he bought that shirt, because that is a cool shirt, isn't it? So I don't be surprised if those are some of the first questions you get. Well, Mr. Boothman, I want to thank you for being a guest on the Sherrard Show this evening, keeping us company here and all the millions of fans. Do you have any final thoughts? Well, it's been a pleasure. I mean, I, you know, when I heard the opportunity um, to, to talk to you guys out there in the, in the United States, I felt, you know, um, honored. So, I, you know, I'm very grateful to be on your show. And, um, you know, I just, I hope, you know, the, the, you know, I hope we could do it again. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We're going to definitely do that and spend more time. Please buy his music, ladies and gentlemen. It is so phenomenal. I am not a brand ambassador or a celebrity endorser for it. I'm just telling you his music is phenomenal. Go to Spotify, go to iHeart, whatever great music is sold. Get this man's music. Um, just make sure that um, <clears throat> you use some contraceptives before you listen to it because you <laughs> will go there. You will go there with this phenomenal music. Lord, forgive me. I'm, I'm just telling you the truth. I love it. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, our next episode of the Sherrard Show, we do have a tribute to Mary Wilson will be coming up with all of the celebrities from Stevie Wonder to um, Suze Green to Sherry Payne to Frida Payne. All of them will be joining to talk about the life, the legacy of Mary Wilson. And then also, if you ever want to know who shot Sam Cooke, that documentary will be out on Essence Television this Tuesday. Just watch it, see it on your screen and monitor Essence Television. That's my sit down interview with the legendary BG Rule who wrote in it and investigated the life of Sam Cooke. And you will be surprised at the results. In the meantime, be safe, enjoy the rest of your Valentine's and we'll see you next episode. Bye bye now. Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Sherrod Show. If you like additional information about our episodes, you can log on to thesherrodshow.com. You can also check us out on social media, like us on Facebook, look at our YouTube videos, subscribe to our newsletter at essencetelevisionnetworks at gmail.com. If you would like to get information to the host, Sherrod, you can email him at thesherrodshow.com. Once again, thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week.